Okay, granted, my lens shelf is a little bit crowded. But I've had these two lenses sitting around for probably about a decade. Um, I bought them originally for my Vericam. And, of course, when the large sensor cameras came around, they were no longer necessary. So when Blackmagic announced this camera and designed this mount so that you can easily replace it with other mounts, including a B4 mount, I was um, more than intrigued, thinking, okay, I'll grab this camera so that I can put my uh, old Fujinons, actually they're Canons, um, to use and also solve a problem problem being that most lenses, including the Cabrio that I own, do not have as large a ratio as those Canon zooms. So imagine my surprise when the B4 mount, which wasn't supposed to ship until June or July of 2017, arrived two or three months early, actually the beginning of April. And so this video is going to be about me replacing the Canon mount with the new Ursa Mini Pro B4 mount, including a little unboxing of the B4 mount. It comes in kind of a, what I would call a non-USA warranty kind of box that if you've ever bought lenses, they kind of come into these white boxes that don't have much Art direction. Um, right on top is the um, instruction sheet. Need a two millimeter hex driver, and um, that's good. Okay, interesting case. Black Magic's take on the lens mount case. We've seen a few of these between red and who else makes cases? One camera, one camera mounts in cases, I'm not too sure. Anyway, it's kind of a unscrew. And there's the mount. The traditional looking black magic cap, back cap. that you know the thing I'm a little unfinished on the machining but that's kind of cool the way you can see the machine marks um, it's just a general comment about this this mount is I believe just under 400 bucks which to my mind is about $200 less than what I would expect and mount with optics to include, to cost, I should say. All right, so, B4 mount. Remember, it stays in place. It's kind of like a PL mount, so. Move the, the knob, remove it. There's the, uh, try to get that nice reflection going. There we go. You can see the focus on the back of the cap. There it is, the B4 mount. And I'm really looking forward to hooking this up to the Ursa Mini Pro. And uh, let's see what else we got. Let's put this cap back on. Got a little red dot so you know where to line it up. Positive lock. See what else is in the box. Foam interior. Very lightweight plastic. There's the screws, eight of them. And uh, let's see what else is in the box. There's actually something else in the box. Oh, it's a CD of some sort, perhaps. Oh, you know what these are? I should have just read CD. These are the shims. So if you're not familiar with shims, they kind of go back to the film days, where you would set the back focus or the depth of your lens mount. And then all the lenses would correspond as long as you kept your spec your lens mount spec properly and your lenses spec properly everything would work and the, of course those days were back in the um, 
rental days where you had collimators and you had technicians who stayed on top of all this stuff. Now, of course, it's really up to owner operators to stay on top of all this stuff. But with a, a zoom, as long as these Fujis and Canons, it's pretty easy to tell um, with back focus. Of course, there's a back focus adjustment on V4 mounts uh, that can help with this, but the reality is it'd be nice to just um, have everything square. Um, and these are obviously labeled 0.3. And these are just like, you know, various thicknesses. It'll adjust the depth of the mount. So that's very nice. And that's included in the price of admission. Okay, so this is the Blackmagic camera. It shipped with the Canon mount, which is a great mount because almost everybody has Canon lenses, and I certainly have my fair share of them. Um, there are four hex screws that are keeping this mount in place. And to remove those screws, very straightforward. Just loosen them. I'm a great believer in loosening them in a pattern. Some people go from this screw to this screw. Now that I remember, it's something that you learn from. Uh, fixing flat tires. Let's go ahead with that. Let's do it that way. Now the mount's already lo loose. All right, so when I loosened those screws, I kind of felt how much pressure was on those screws. Now, I'm gonna remove this screw. I'm gonna put it in a, a container, keep it from rolling off the desk. Um, I'm going to take these two screws out and leave this one sort of half inserted because I think if you remove this and this last, it'll just plop out and perhaps get damaged. So I'm going to leave the top one in in hopes that I can carefully remove the mount, place it somewhere safe and not misplace any of the parts, especially the screws. So I'm gonna keep my finger on the mount, maybe right there. Unscrew this last screw. And gently remove the mount. I'm gonna go in here where there's a little bit of a tab. Okay, so there's the light baffling. Just so you can see, there are some contacts so those would need to be protected. I guess it would be um, awesome if this fit in the case that the B4 mount came in, which I'm suspecting it will. So here we go. Cannon mount removed. B4 mount ready to go, except for one thing. Shims. The instructions clearly say to add a shim before installing the B4 mount. So I'm going to take the B4 mount with its caps, place it over here. I'm going to open up this and I'm going to remove the 0.10 shim from the collection. Wow. These are, there are way more shims than I thought there would be. Remember, they're quite delicate. Okay, so there's the 10. The 10 is exceedingly thin. There's even a thinner one, which would be easy to tear. All right. So the Canon mount actually has two shims that are attached to the camera body that you leave in place when you install the B4 mount. You 
add to the already mounted shims the point one o and that was pretty easy seems to be in place um I've got a little bit of a bevel going here for so gravity can help. I think actually I'm going to increase that a little bit. Okay. So my cannon mount is safely placed in the um, holder that the before mount came in. My before mount is right here. The nice thing about the B4 mount, since the screws are on the outside, you can protect the inside of the camera as you install the B4 mount. All right, so the B4 mount is oriented correctly and I'm going to slowly slide it into place. There's a couple of um, pins that match up. That was really, really easy. Now for the hard part. Carefully placing the hex screws into the mount. Now, <clears throat> in the earlier unboxing video and probably part of the shot that I used preceding this, I inadvertently stated that the hex screws, some of which had Loctite and the others did not. It seems that they all have Loctite, Loctite type on them, except some of the screws, I mean, it's only painted on half of the screw. I'm not that familiar with what's going on here, but it made it look like some of the screws had Loctite and some didn't. Now the screws really quite quickly settled into the mount. Um, so much so that I don't think they're long enough to actually catch something. I'm not certain I'm catching anything. So the only way to test this is to pull the mount out. And it seems like I am actually catching something. So. So um, got those two in, and there's actually five instead of four with the cannon mount. There's actually five with this mount. So. Anyway, I'm delicately installing these screws so that I don't cross thread them. So, I'm just turning them a couple of rotations. These screws are different than the screws that came with the cannon mount. They're different colors, so it'll be easy to tell which ones are which. Uh, so, what do we got so far? I've got all the screws gently installed, but not tightened. So now I'm going to go through and tighten them a little bit at a time. Going through each screw, tightening one or two revolutions. Do I feel at some point they're going to start bearing down? This would be slightly easier if I turn the camera on its back and look straight down on it, but since I don't feel like rigging the iPhone to 
point straight down to get a shot. I'm just going to do it this way. And I'll probably just speed this video up at this point or make an edit. All right, so now I'm at the point where these screws are starting to feel snug. They're all snug. So, all right. Go back to this screwdriver. Um, all right, so what am I going to do now? I'm going to tighten it up to about the tightness that I felt when I was taking the cannon mount off. I think for the time being, until I get a torque torque wrench in there, I think I can do it this way and uh, be relatively safe. I won't put too much pressure like I won't haul the camera around with the lens attached in case they're a little weak. That should get me close. All right. And you have to retest each one because as the mount settles, those other ones are going to get a little loose. Okay, so that's it. That's the B4 mount installed on the camera. Go ahead and open it up. There you go. And um, next, um, we'll be installing the lens and um, shooting some test footage with the, the lenses to see how well they perform.